Yep, guys, I am all bundled up. Tonight is supposed to get down to 17. Tomorrow night is supposed to get down to 8. That is a record here in Texas. Uh, there is an extreme cold front of Arctic air coming down from the north and it's affecting a lot of the central states and it's even affecting us down here in Texas. Uh, this is unprecedented. I mean, from what I understand, this hasn't happened in some 80 years. Um, so it's pretty darn cold. <laughs> so today I'm gonna, uh, my feeble attempt on try to, trying to save my onions and my garlic plants. Um, garlic is pretty much good for 20s, you know, and down, down into the 20s. But um, teens and single digits, I don't think so. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to cover, here let me show you. I got a bed of onions here and another bed, actually two beds of onions, they're just different varieties. Bed here and the next bed here. And way in the in the back right there on my finger is I have a, a bed and a half of uh, Sicilian garlic. We're going to try and cover them up. Uh, I have some Swiss, or I'm sorry, yeah, Swiss chard here. And over there I have some kale. Kale might make it. You know, it's pretty hardy. But um, I'm not sure about that. 8 degrees is 8 degrees. It's even cold for up north. And over here, I have some uh, Chinese cabbage growing. And it's going to kill it for sure because, I mean, either, even though it's cold hardy, this Chinese cabbage here is not going to withstand 8 degrees. Uh, I'm going to try to put some plastic over my beds, but the ones I'm going to try and save. And hopefully the heat from the earth at night will keep it warm enough uh, to keep it from freezing and uh, killing all my onions and all my other plants here. Crazy stuff, man. I have my peach tree here that's uh, got blooms on it. I have, a, I think this is an apple tree here. This is a, yeah, Anna's apple it's called. Got some blooms on it. And then I have another peach tree. Let me see if I can zoom in on it for you. Right there. That peach tree there has got blooms on it. And unfortunately, those blooms are gonna die. Here I have 
a uh, fig tree. Last winter it died down to the root and then it grew back again. Once it'll do that until its tree gets established. I doubt very much this is going to survive it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cutting from this. Right now it's dormant and it's still alive, but it's dormant. I'm going to take a cutting from this, and uh, I'll probably keep it in the fridge. In the event this were to die, I have that cutting still, and I can start a new tree and save the tree. This is my Texas Blue Giant fig tree. So I'm going to take a cutting from it right here. This here, if it survives, which I doubt, um, it'll continue on. And I, plus I'll have an extra tree. So I got a little tape also to mark it because I have another couple different varieties of figs. I'm gonna mark it so I don't get confused of which, what is what. But for now, the only thing I have is this old sheet that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it on here and then I'm gonna wrap plastic around it I think we're going to have to get a couple of bricks in here. You know, this may be my feeble attempt to save some of my vegetables. Eight degrees is pretty darn cold. Even if you live up north, it's pretty darn cold. Um, I'm hoping the heat from the earth will keep it just enough to keep those roots from freezing anyways. Uh, even if the leaves die down, as long as they're able to sprout from the middle again on this Chinese cabbage, I'll be happy and hopefully it'll save my onions and garlic all right so in my greenhouse here I have a bunch of carrots I got some broccoli I got some lettuce that's going to seed of course and here I have more more broccoli more lots of cabbage over there some more Chinese cabbage and uh, I need to protect it yeah, you see we still got a few cabbages growing in here. But yeah, we need to protect all this stuff. See the cold is already already getting to it. So I don't know if it's going to make it, but I'm going to try. I got these cactus here. I'm not sure if I should take those in the garage. Uh, I put them towards the middle of the greenhouse hoping that will help but uh, we will see
All right, we decided to take these cactus in. Um, they might, they, they'll probably make it. Not 100% sure. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna bring them in. Just that I gotta be really careful because, you know, they wobble around a lot. All right. Actually, you know what? That's even too much. You can use the other one on the other side. Yeah. So I just drained a little water out of it to warm up the uh, the spigot here, just a, just a little bit, and this will kind of insulate it. You know what I need? Tape. A little piece of tape. doesn't tear this way. Yeah, it does. Not much. Okay. One more to do, then it's down to the well house. I'll tell you what, let me run this for a little bit. See, the water's warm, it's like 70 degrees from the inside of the house. And that'll warm up that brass and the pipe's just enough. That's all we can do down here in the south. We're not like up north where you got those anti-freeze um, spigots. Hopefully that'll work. warm in here. Somebody, like, I need to wrap some of this stuff again. It's like some animal. I need to wrap this stuff up again. A lot of the tape over the years come off. I got to rewrap the insulation. But I do not want this thing freezing. We got Lily here. She's the one that's been abused and I can't put her back in with the rest of the flock. They'll they will beat her up pretty bad. So it's going to get down to 17 tonight and then 8 degrees the next following night. Uh, they're not used to that. Being in this open chicken tractor here, it's not good. So I'm going to get her and put her in our new coop and she'll be our first resident. <laughs> uh, maybe I should take my gloves off. Almost had her. <laughs> 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 
Come here, Lily. Come on, Lily. Come here. Come here, Lily. Come on. Come on, Lily. Give her grab Tara and then you can grab her. Mia! Mia, stop it! She's getting scared of Mia too, probably. Come on, Lily. Come on, Lily. Mia! Can you open this door, huh? Uh -huh. Okay, Lily, you're gonna be nice and warm. Get down. Mia! Stay away. Her new home. It's okay, Lily. Mia, stay away. Mia, don't go in there. Here. You thought I was gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to give her food in here and yep. water. Her, bring her water in and water. Yeah, in I gotta bring her water in and uh, and food. She got her own heat lamp and everything. You like it? Really? She's like, where am I? <laughs> She's like, okay. She's looking around. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. We'll keep her here tonight. Tomorrow I'll open that automatic door. Have her go out into the uh, run. Hopefully she'll come back inside. And uh and we'll see. At least she won't freeze to death in here. I mean, she'd probably be okay in that because what she does, she goes in the nesting box. But um, I don't know. I just feel bad having her because on the other coop, they can all cuddle up together. I have the window shut, and they stay warm in there. In that uh, chicken tractor, she's in that nesting box, and it's kind of very airy on the bottom. The air comes in underneath from underneath. And uh, I, I would just feel bad if I found her frozen in the morning. <laughs> I would feel really bad. So at least in here, she'll have a chance. So I think she'll be happy in here for a few days anyways. Um, got her food, water there. I got some of those Grub Terra treats on the floor for her. So she is all set and she's got her own little heat lamp. You are good to go, little girl. That's right. Yeah, I know. So what I have to do is get their water and put it inside the coop where it's gonna be a little warmer so it won't freeze. <coughs> In fact, it's uh, pretty froze right now. Yeah, it's froze. Shoot. Put it in the corner. Hopefully it won't freeze. My wife even put some more food down here. Actually it's the uh, Grub Terra. And then in their feeder here, it's still about uh, a quarter full. 
then she put some more of that grub terra inside of there so these eat plenty of that plenty of the grains and stay nice and warm very slippery steps <laughs> It's starting to sleet. Man, we just got done with everything. Got the greenhouse closed up. Got a lot of our stuff covered up here. And the well house is all insulated and covered up. Now it's starting to sleet. And uh, it's starting to stick, actually. You can see on the ground right there. It's starting to stick. So tonight, low 17. Tomorrow night's the big cold night. Eight degrees. Eight degrees is cold. And I'm from Michigan. I grew up in Michigan, and that, that's even cold for up there. <laughs> so, and the difference is down here, nobody's ready for that. You know, the houses aren't built well. They're insulated. My, I, my house is very insulated, but um, a lot of places are not that insulated. A lot of older homes, um, the pipes aren't designed for that. They're not insulated and a lot of homes are, are manufactured homes where they're where they got a space underneath the house and those pipes have to be insulated very very well especially for tomorrow night <laughs> The chickens aren't even out. They're afraid of the snow. Hey chickies. Hey chicky chickies. These guys are nice and warm in here. Not good. Not good. I think a better option for me is just to get some dog bowls, some water in there and uh, change it out a couple times a day. It's 15 degrees out here, it's pretty cold. What are you guys, chicken? I think they're chicken. <laughs> come on out. Look at this. They haven't even come out yet. You afraid of a little snow? Come on out. There you go, little girl. 
Last night we had a lot of sleet. So there's a lot of ice on the panels right now. The sun's been peeking in and out. If the sun would just stay out for long enough, it would melt that ice away. Now it's 17 degrees out here. I'm going to see what temperature it is in the greenhouse. It's an overcast day, but even overcast day, the, the sun's rays or whatever rays we get does get trapped in the greenhouse. Thus the greenhouse effect. <laughs> Alright guys, so in here, we got a little snow on the top, plants look like, ooh, they're kind of wilted, but right now, it's about 50 degrees. Yeah, things don't look like, uh, things are having a hard time. Boy, I hope they make it. Everything's wilted. Cabbage looks okay. Yep, cabbage is good. Cabbage is good here. The leaves, yeah. Cabbage is very, very hardy. Very cold hardy. Well guys, uh, I didn't think it was gonna snow this much. The uh, stakes that I put to keep the plastic off the plants, well, with the weight of the snow, of course, it broke through. You can see down there. <sighs> yeah. Broke through there, broke through there. I hope my onions survive. It doesn't look like it, though. It broke right through the plastic. Garlic. I mean, I, I think the, the leaf, the plant itself, is probably gonna die, but the bulb it should come back. Actually, with a blanket of snow like this, uh, Maybe the ground will stay a little warmer. Well guys, you know, that's pretty much it here. It's cold, it's miserable. Like I said earlier, I left Michigan because I didn't want this crap anymore. But uh, <laughs> this is the second time. Second time it snowed here. You saw my last video, it wasn't that long ago where we had like uh, six inches of snow. But it was in the 30s then, you know, mid-low 30s. Now we're at 17 degrees. Tonight it's getting down to eight. Uh, yeah, don't like it. Don't like it one bit. Anyways, guys, I'll keep you updated what survived and what didn't survive. And uh, I don't want to make this a long drawn out video. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.